In this video, we are going to discuss about the hematopoiosis. Hematopoiosis refers to the formation of all blood cells from stem cells. These stem cells are multipotent and can differentiate into various blood cell types, ensuring our body has constant supply of red cells, white cells and platelets. Let's break it down by location and timing. During the embryonic stage, the yolk sac is the primary site for around 0 to 2 months of gestation. This is where the very first blood cells are produced. From 2 to 7 months, the liver becomes the major site of hematopoiosis, with some contribution from the spleen also. As the fetus develops further, around 5 to 6 months, hematopoiosis starts to shift towards the bone marrow, which becomes the main site after birth and continues throughout the life. From birth onwards, the bone marrow remains the permanent and exclusive site of blood cell formation. For more accurate location and timing, here is the chart showing all the information. Now let's see the whole mechanism in detail. It all starts with hematopoietic stem cells, which are like the body's monster cells found in the bone marrow. These stem cells can renew themselves and differentiate into all types of blood cells. As they mature, they first become multipotent hematopoietic progenitors, losing the ability to self-renew but committing to specific lineages shown in the diagram. From here, progenitor cell splits into two main paths. One path leads to common myeloid progenitor, the other one common lymphoid progenitor. We see the common lymphoid progenitor cell diversifies into NK T cell precursor and B cell. The T cell precursor differentiates into NK cell and T cell shown in the diagram. Then we go to the common myeloid progenitor, where it's first differentiated into two cells, granulocyte macrophage progenitor cell and megakaryocyte erythroid progenitor. The megakaryocyte erythroid progenitor cell first gives us megakaryocyte as shown in the diagram. And second it gives erythroblast which finally differentiates into erythrocyte shown in the diagram. Then we get to the granulocyte macrophage progenitor which first differentiates into macrophage dendritic cell precursor, from which we get the dendritic cell and macrophage as shown in the diagram. It also differentiates into neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil and mast cell as shown in the diagram. Now let's break down the key growth factors and their roles in hematopoiosis. First up we have the SCF or stem cell factor. It's essential for the survival and proliferation of hematopoietic stem cell, the foundation of all blood cells. Then there is IL-3, which supports early myeloid progenitors, helping them grow into various blood cell types. Then we have GMCSF. GMCSF steps in to stimulate the production of granulocytes and monocytes, crucial player in our immune defense. For neutrophils, GCSF is the go-to factor driving the maturation to fight off infections. When it comes to turning monocytes into macrophages, MCSF does the heavy lifting, enhancing immune response and tissue rapier. Then we have EPO or erythropoietin, the molecule behind erythrocyte development. Then if you need platelets, TPO or thrombopoietin ensures megakaryocytes matures and release them for clotting. Then we have IL-5 which specializes in eosinophil maturation, important for combating parasites and allergic responses. For lymphoid cells, IL-7 keeps lymphoid progenitors alive, while IL-15 supports natural killer cell development. And finally, FLT3L plays a key role in dendritic and lymphoid cell development, bridging innate and adaptive immunity. Each of these factors has a unique job, working together to maintain a balanced and responsive blood cell system. So this is what hematopoiosis is and it is growth factors. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting me. Work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.